Welcome to my very first ever video blog. If you're on the Harper Edutech YouTube channel, uh, check the blog post also, which this is accompanied. So I thought it's easier to actually talk about flipped learning and some of the tools and the learning that I've made in the last couple of years. So basically I am a technology teacher. I was a chef for 25 years and I've now been teaching for six years. Um, in Australia, technology encompasses everything from wood and metal, but my key areas are hospitality um, and design and tech. So I knew about flipped learning about four years ago. And from that four years, I've actually worked through and tried and trialed a few different things. The first thing you need to know, flip learning is not about using it in every class. It's just part of your toolkit. And I've generally used it with senior classes. So about three years ago, I started to create videos using Camtasia Studio and learned how to use that software. The brilliant thing about that is you can actually put quizzes in. The only downside to that is you have to put it into their particular site, which is screencast.com. Now I tried that with uh, my hospitality students. The problem was it wasn't sustainable for me. It was taking four days to actually create a video. So the first key thing about flipped learning is it has to be sustainable for you and it has to be able to engage the kids. So over a period of time, I worked out a, a key tools that I use, which I'm gonna share with you today, and also check out the blog post. So the key thing is, the first thing is you need to ask, what do I want the kids to learn? What are the key concepts? How are you actually gonna break those key concepts? And remembering that flipped learning, when you're looking at teenagers, which is the type of kids I'm teaching between five and eight minutes, no more than eight minutes, otherwise kids are going to lose interest. Once you've got those key concepts, you actually break them up into little modules. And I'll talk about tools. You need to know, well, why is that important for each concept? Once you've got the concepts, you create your flipped learning modules. Another key thing to remember about flipped learning, it is not just about a video. It's a learning cycle. So within the videos I have uh, formative quizzes and it's a data driven way of driving your teaching which is really key because I can actually see how my kids are doing on each flipped learning module and then that steers what I do in class. Now the next step is what am I doing in class and how is it changing because you cannot just do videos and then do what you do in class because they're getting key concepts in videos, you can then go in and actually work um, with the kids individually and personalize. So I actually changed my whole learning environment. Um, I'm in a practical classroom and hospitality, but we had theory rooms, moving desks together and working on projects. So blending project-based learning for kids to actually use those key concepts in teams, collaborating, and actually um, accessing resources and people that I actually brought in via video link. So all of those key concepts, they start to understand it in a much deeper level and the learning is much better and it's a lot more authentic to what they will actually do when they go out to work. Now, tools. This is a really tough one because with flipped learning, the ed tech community have basically harnessed that you have a lot of different options some are excellent some i would probably steer away from but the key learning i did was i went for big companies like um, camtasia studio i um, looked at um, the microsoft suite of things i looked at google apps and i actually had to look at delivery so first of all, delivery. I actually chose Weebly website for a couple of reasons. One, I used that and Edmodo, but I needed to be able to arrange the content a little bit better so that kids made it easy and also accessibility on mobile devices, phones and the whole thing. Flipped learning. Um, 
I actually started using Adobe Presenter, but the problem with Adobe Presenter is once you have got all of your interactive material, you need an Adobe Connect server. And I have to say thank you, Pip Cleaves, who put me onto Office Mix. And Office Mix is actually PowerPoint. And generally, I don't like PowerPoint because of the way people use it. But it is a very powerful tool, very easy to use, embedded back into the site. So you can actually see that the kids have done it and the formative quizzes come up on a dashboard that I use. Then within class, I actually set up tasks and projects which tied in all of those key concepts. Some were team-based, some were individual put into a portfolio in design and technology this year. I can tell you it was very, very successful. And throughout every term, I've put a survey for students and can actually see the results getting better and the student engagement getting better. Another key tip is you need to work out a workflow that works for you and making sure that it's sustainable because that's why it failed a few times before for me because I ended up doing things making it I'm a perfectionist and I know most teachers are but it's not sustainable in your everyday life as a teacher so sustainability looking at different models um, tools and how you're actually going to bring it together check the blog post because you'll find a lot of extra information on there, what I did and other suggestions. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch me on Twitter. It's um, S underscore Harper three uh, on LinkedIn under Simon Harper, or just comment or communicate through my blog. Thanks for listening. And I look forward to talking to you soon.